Hello friends, welcome back to our CPA learning series. This is episode three. And in this tutorial, we'll just learn about or see how to use the content modifier and the Groovy script. A very simple use case we'll consider in this tutorial as well. Now, before we start, a very quick recap to our previous episode where we started our you know, first integration flow development, which didn't have any component as such, right? It's completely empty as you can see. Only just we added a SOAP adapter over here. And here you can see the message exchange pattern in use as a request reply. So as a result, if we just make a request uh, to our integration flow, which is containing two variables, like called uh, 10 and 20. And then if I make a request to, it basically get the same as the response because my integration flow uh, just using a request reply as a message action pattern, which what we explained uh, or have seen rather in the previous episode. Now in this episode, the agenda is now to just to not send back this as a response, but let's grab these two values sum it up and send back a different you know, response payload using the content modifier as well as the group script so let's start now to add the content modifier you can find something called the message transformer if you click on that the first item is called content modifier click it and just place on this line that way content modifier is added to this iflow now the first thing is the general you can rename it if you want but i would like to keep it as it is let's put it a little up so you have you have uh, you can see three different tabs up there one for message header the exchange property and the third is message body so this is the three areas content modifier can contribute so the message header section let's add uh, two variables i'm calling it as an operand one because uh, the first operand I am preferring to grab this integer A and operand 2 I'll be adding this integer B. So that way I would like to use the XPath, which is an XML path language. That way I can, you know, uh, it can it can traverse through the XML uh, payload and it can grab the value that it is, uh, you know, mapping over here. So mapping done. Like for example, we'll be adding the uh, integer A, but integer A is actually uh, covered under our namespace called Tim. And this is on add, right? So that way we'll be adding tim colon add for slash tim colon int capital A. Now data type, let's put it as java dot lang dot capital string. All right. So click on add to add the another operand. So we can put like operand two, and again the same as it path, and here. Same copy and paste, but this time it will be B. Now, if I just save it, let's see what happens. By the way, we have to also put the data type that I missed out. All right, so whatever the values are coming, though it's integer, but actually the variable type I'm setting it up as a string type. So let's click on save. So the moment I click on the save button, as you can see, that is in some yellow mark. Let's toggle out my dark reader, and you can see this kind of a you know sign over here. And if you just you know hover on that, it says that namespace prefix tm assigned to row one and two of type xpath not defined in namespace mapping. What it says uh, basically, if we just uh, click on anything outside that box, it will you will come to this integration flow. Go to the runtime configuration. It will something we call namespace mapping. Here we have to add something. What to add? If you go to our uh, payload request, this is what uh, the XML namespace mapping to grab till forward slash and paste it over here. Obviously, you have to remove this quotation. So that way, I have to tell to this uh, iFlow that stem will part will be part of the namespace. So you can you know explode that namespace mapping. So now click on save, and you'll see this icon will be vanished. You see it's done all right so next what i want i want this uh, two values uh, to be uh, you know render back as an operand one and operand two uh, let's first display the values that are being uh, just you know uh, picked up or not for that we can do one thing All right, now you can put the value like here. So because this is the variables we have declared the message header. 
with the body section the type i have put as, as expression you have a, something called constant also constant uh, string also you can put but i want to put an expression and then put header because the header contains this one or print one and similar way we can put dollar because it's a camel uh, uh you know uh, language that we'll be using so that's why i'm putting a camel framework so that's a camel expression of rent two these two values you have just grabbed and we'll be passing it as a new response payload so let's save it and we can deploy now yes so if everything fine so if i just click on that what i'm supposed to see um yeah you see it's upper ends upper end one is 10 and upper end two is 20 so that means we are able to grab these two values correctly all right now next thing uh we have to do we basically need to add these two values so i can add a new variable over here and this is called result and i can put it as an expression here as well and let's for the time being that expression is called header dot operand one okay that's a source value but ideally this uh, value will be uh, will be just changing or setting with the summation of these two variables so like click on save so that way the result is added to this property now to sum these two values we cannot you know add these two expressions okay like we cannot do like that uh, because it's an expression so you don't expect that upper end two so don't expect uh, this will be your result so let's put it to result this will not work i'm just showing that what will be the outcome if we do like this so it's a dollar you can cancel uh, expression so this is property because it's a property field property uh, tab so under property the variable is called result if i save and if i deploy and let's see what it does okay now if i click on uh, request you see the result comes but it basically concatenating to to you know string values right so it is not the summing up to different uh, uh, you know expressions it is not way work like that so what i have to do let's add something called um, scripting if you go to click on script the two options you will have groovy script and the javascript uh, preferably it will be a groovy script that should be preferable to use but yes you can also use javascript so now put it after content modifier so that way this content modifier response uh, you know or the, or the headers like say this very very values which is the uh, this two operand one and operand two correct this two as well as this exchange property called result all will be available in groovy script now if you click on that there is something called create the, this button is called create if you click on this create it will basically take you to a generated coding page and it has three areas that uh, by default the coding will create it the first thing is the body portion but body portion we are not interested we are interested to grab the headers so let's we call it integer let's declare it's an integer and the value one now we know this is all java string lang so that's why we want to convert into uh, integer vari uh, variable so whatever the value comes from the operand one because this operand uh, one was one of the variable of the header right so message gate headers will give all the headers and out of that uh, uh, headers we are just trying to get the operand one and we are converting into the integer so that we can pass it to the integer uh, variable called value one similarly we can copy we can paste uh, to its below uh, something called value two and let's grab it from operand two all right so these two values we added let's declare one more final variable called sum just to be sure that value one uh, plus value two we just adding it up right otherwise it will be a string concatenation if we don't you know uh, do a first scene that convert from string to integer now the sum will basically grab this value 10 and 20 sum it up and the results will be stored in the sum it's pretty simplified now this two thing lines i don't need it but the properties i don't need any properties to read 
next actually and just need to set the property so i don't this two values i don't need it just set property the property name why we created called result right this is what a property and what with what we want to set the value with and that is called sum correct so that is the local variable sum and what about the results got we are just returning back out of the scurvy script and click on okay everything fine if you go to processing now you can see the script 3 group is created you can save but finally we just need to add one more uh, content modifier and oh, sorry this is i don't know why it is that yeah, content modifier put it here now the, out of the group script it will just go to the content modifier so what we'll do we'll just take from the this message because this is the current we are receiving it so this we cut from here and put it over here because everything will be accessible out of that so this is what happened my operand one operand two and this result is set with the summation of two variables if i click on save and click on deploy uh hopefully uh, it will be able to grab the two values sum it up using the Kurbi script and passing to the content modifier successfully deployed so if i just go and click on uh, execute awesome you see the result become 30. if we put some other values obviously makes sense it will also work dynamically it will be 60 right so this is how we can pretty well use this uh and our different components now one interesting thing is so let's see how these values are being actually moved across the different component for that you can click on this integrations monitor and it will take you to this page which is called the all started you could click on because one was there now in the log configuration default log level i showed last time it is actually info related to trace but if you click on trace I click on change it will be remaining for some time right around 10 minutes kind of it will be there and now if i make a request to the same response i have received the correct response but now if i go to the overview once again and now this is the 10 which is a completed message if you click the first one and you will see something called log and click on trace this is the trace options you will be seeing now because we have enabled the trace now you see that how things are all going so first is a soap because this is from here then it goes to the content modifier so this is content modifier from there it goes to groovy script it's a private script then content modifier 2 which is here finally it goes to end and finally it goes back to the soap our client uh, our receiver right that way it goes ruby scripting if we just go to ruby scripting let's see um you can see the result right so result is actually 40 plus 20 that is the operation it's happening and the header operand 1 and operand 2 these two values because these two are actually part of the header so these two values already grabbed over here that's why if it's space then you can understand that why the result is not coming correctly so that you can kind of debug and check like how things are by, by enable the tracing you can you know identify what's going wrong so after uh, group is created you go to content modifier you will see again the operand one and two still reach content modifier two and 14 20 and now it's an exchange from properties now the result is actually 60. so it is the final outcome right so group is script it is actually summation of two uh, values 40 and 20 because this summation is happening uh two variables being summed at the Google script level right but the content modifier is the final results and you can see the result is continuing 60 which is the which is the final results as i said now go to end and end is still result 60 Hater is still these two values and the payload is basically changed with the content modifier coming out of right so that way it is actually coming to our response so that way pretty easy for us now to identify how to modify the response how to grab the you know properties from the 6ml uh, payload uh, handling the namespace how to handle the namespace that we have learned and also we have learned how to you know process this in the group script and finally you know send back the response the way we are looking at i hope it's all good uh, and you enjoyed this you have learned something in this tutorial from yeah, we'll connect again soon with a new uh, and a topic on the CPI. Thank you so much for watching.